Hello to you newcomers and welcome back my lovely subscribers. This is Big Baby Props and I'm the Big Baby. Today I've got another helmet tutorial for you guys and this episode we'll be doing the ARC Trooper CT5555, better known as Fives. Fives is a prominent character in the animated Clone Wars TV show. We followed his story from Cadet to Grunt to ARC Trooper over the course of the series. With that being said, Let's do this character the proper honor and make a beautiful helmet in his name. Before we begin, I want to mention I've put a link to the files used in this video in the description. So if you have a 3D printer and want to complete this project, be sure to check that out. If you don't have a 3D printer and want to complete this project, also check out the link in the description to my shop online where I sell a variety of Clone Wars helmets, including the ARC Trooper. If you're on the fence about buying your first 3D printer, I want to encourage you to do so. It really can unlock your creative potential and has a great community behind it. Find a link to my suggested 3D printer in the description. With that all sorted out, let's begin. Since this helmet is too large to print in one piece for my printers, I had to print it in multiple pieces. So the first step we're gonna have to do is assembly. For that, we're going to be using a sandpaper pad glued to a flat surface, some cyanoacrylate super glue, and if you're feeling brave, a soldering iron. Use the sandpaper board to sand all the edges of the helmet needing to be glued together. This is going to do a few things for us. One, it'll mean our edges are as smooth as possible. This will help reduce the amount of sanding and smoothing later on down the road. Two, this will help our glue bond much faster. The fine grits from the sanded plastic provide more surface area for the glue to cure, meaning it will dry and set faster than if we didn't sand it. I sometimes like to use a soldering iron to help hold things in place while the glue sets. Simply line up a section of the helmet perfectly flush, then use the hot soldering iron to weld together a portion of the inside of the helmet. This will hold it in place while you follow up the rest of the seam with your super glue. Once you have your helmet fully assembled, we can move on to smoothing out the 3D printer lines. The major obstacle to overcome when finishing 3D printed parts is smoothing out the 3D printer lines. To do that we're going to be using a combination of Rust-Oleum filler primer and Bondo spot putty. Links to both can be found in the description. The filler primer is essentially a thick spray paint, we'll paint all over the helmet, and what it's going to do is it's going to seep into the 3D printer lines, dry, and then we'll be able to sand it down to get a smooth finish. I usually do three to four heavy coats of filler primer to get it to a smoothness I'm happy with. Filler primer likely won't be the economic choice when smoothing out some of the larger print lines, but it works great for the small lines along the sides. The Bondo spot putty is kind of a catch-all for deformities and works just great for some of the thicker printer lines. For instance, instead of applying eight or nine coats of filler primer, we can just rub on some Bondo with our finger let it harden over a few hours, and then sand it away the same as our filler primer. Use Bondo anywhere else the filler primer may have missed. For sanding, I like to do one run with the mouse sander to get a large portion of the hand sanding done quickly. Use a medium grit pad on this, something between 100 and 200. If the sandpaper is too coarse, we run the risk of damaging the helmet. After we're done with the mouse, I move on to hand sanding. For this, I like to use a 150 grit and follow it up with 300 to get a finish I'm happy with. At the end of sanding, you should have a helmet that is perfectly smooth. I found that giving the helmet a light coat of black can help identify spots that may need additional filler primer or Bondo. If you find that after your first run of sanding, there are still imperfections or layer lines, fear not, it happens all the time. Simply repeat the filler primer and Bondo steps as many times as necessary to get a finish you like. Now that we've got the hard part out of the way, we can start painting. The first thing we'll need is a base coat of white. I'm going to be using a flat white instead of a gloss white because we'll be weathering the helmet later on and it'll ruin any gloss that you had anyway. Be sure to take your time when spray painting from now on. Any runs or streaks you get from painting too much at once will need to be sanded and smoothed down once they dry. Once our white paint is dry, we can use some painter's tape to prepare the helmet for the other colors. Now Fives has one of the weirdest paint schemes of any clone, if you ask me. 
I think it looks like one of those Rorschach tests where the psychologist holds up a photo blotch and asks you what you see. As a fun side note, it's actually a depiction of the Rishi eel he encountered on the Rishi outpost in the first episode we see him in. We're going to need to do a lot of taping and drawing to replicate this complex design. I like to tape over the area first, then draw out the design in pencil to make sure it's symmetric and accurate. After I'm happy with the pencil drawings, I'll trace it in Sharpie, then cut away what I don't need with an X-Acto knife. Once the tape job is complete, we're going to add something to help with our weathering later on down the line. That is liquid latex. We're going to brush it on with a cotton swab, and once the latex is cured, we'll paint over it. Then once the paint is dried, we can peel up the latex with our finger, and this is going to give the paint the impression of being chipped from damage, a really cool looking effect. As you can see, I kind of twist the cotton swab tip first. This is to help in the application of the latex appear more realistic. When done without twisting the top of the latex, it'll be applied in kind of a blobby way which doesn't look too great once it's peeled off. With the twisted end, you can add more definition to the latex and have the edges be more jagged and random, better simulating chipping. Let the latex dry for about half an hour and then we can move on to painting the other colors. Before you start painting the blue, do a quick run over the tape with your finger to ensure it is stuck. That way, no paint will get underneath it and ruin your design. Just like before, take your time with the colored paint and you'll get a great finish. Now we get to have a little fun and peel off all the tape like it's a Christmas present. And let me tell you guys, it is satisfying as hell to peel all the tape away and reveal your design underneath. This is also the time to remove any latex you applied with your finger. Also a reminder not to peel too forcefully or you might lift the white paint underneath right off. We're going to repeat the taping and painting process for the remainder of the auxiliary colors like black, red, and gray until we have a helmet ready for weathering. The weathering process is vital for giving your helmet an authentic battle damaged look. Luckily you don't have to be a master airbrusher to get great effects. The supplies we need are going to be some gloves, some black acrylic paint, a cup and sponge brush, and paper towels. What we're going to be doing is adding some paint to the cup, then adding a small amount of water to that cup to make a black liquid mixture. We're going to paint that mixture over the helmet, letting the paint soak into all the pieces, and then after a few seconds of soaking, we'll follow it up with a paper towel and wipe away a majority of the paint. What's going to be left is a small amount of paint in all the areas, but especially the recessed areas that couldn't get cleaned out as well. This is what gives it the realistic effect of general dirtiness and really sets the helmet apart from a clean white. We're going to be repeating this process in small portions around the helmet until we've got the thing as dirty as we like. A nice benefit of this process is you can continue to do it for as long as you like. Each iteration will make the helmet dirtier and dirtier in appearance. There are basically an infinite amount of possibilities you can go for. As you're weathering, you need to be careful to watch for streaks. Since we're applying a watery mixture, it's quite common for a streak to run alongside the helmet where you didn't intend. You'll need to clean up these streaks as soon as you notice them, or else the paint will dry too far and you'll need to fix it since it doesn't look realistic at all. You can see a streak along the your right side of the helmet that I didn't see for some time and it was quite difficult to rub off. After you're happy with the weathered finish of the paint, we can move on to the next weathering technique. I'm going to be using a very low grit sandpaper, in this case 60, to really scuff up the blue and black paint of the helmet. The blue and black are going to be largely untouched by the black paint and need to be weathered as well. The low grit of sandpaper means it's going to simulate scratches and wear very well. I generally like to add a few scratches here and there, but pay special attention to any of the sharp edges since in most cases those are going to be the places the paint is most likely to wear off first. Once you're happy with the weathered effect of your helmet, go over it and add any colors or details you didn't want weathered. In my case, it was the red of the design and black of the aerators and mouth grill. I just used the same black acrylic paint we used in our weathering process. If I painted these pieces before I weathered, the watery mixture would have washed away a lot of this paint 
which is why I saved it for after weathering. The final piece of the helmet will be the visor. I like to use the Hobart face shield replacement as my visor. It's clean, cheap, and definitely looks like the real deal. Find a link for it in the description. And that's it guys. That is what you need to complete your Fives Arc Trooper helmet. Unfortunately, the head opening for this helmet is a bit too small for my stupidly large head, so my lovely fiance will be modeling the helmet for me. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and consider completing this project on your own. If you want to see more Clone Trooper helmet tutorials, be sure to subscribe. I hope to see you all again next time.